We are learning about Golang for web dev. This is an entire playlist here on YouTube. You could find it by clicking on my username and then just looking for my most recent playlist on Golang web dev. And the first video will give you access to all the code and code resources, so check it out. <clears throat> and uh, we're looking at functions now. Now if I wanted to, I could play around with bar a little bit more. I could have it take in, I could have it defined with multiple parameters. Okay. And so when I call it, now I have to pass in multiple arguments. I define it with multiple parameters, and I call it with multiple arguments. Just terminology. Okay, and I'm returning a simple string, it's sprint, when we looked at sprint, hold down command on my keyboard and click on sprint. Spaces are added between operands when neither is a spring, string. So no space should be added. So I need to, and he is boom, because you know at least one of those is a is a is a string, and only spaces are added when neither is a spring, string. So I need to add my spaces, and I'm going to return multiple returns. You can have multiple returns. So I need to return a string, which is what I'm returning with funct sprint, and I'm going to return y plus 10. I've been doing SQL in the mornings with Roxanne, so I want to add semicolons to the end of lines. You don't have to add semicolons. The compiler will add them in for you. They're there. They're just out of the way to keep things clean, zen, beautiful, not cluttered. This is not the house of that one relative which you have where crap is everywhere. This is like the Guggenheim Museum in New York. It's clean. There's space, emptiness. It's nice. Now, why do I have this red line up here? I'm returning two values and I'm only catching one. So I either need to throw away one of the values, I could throw away that one value that's being returned. Now the compiler knows that I know what I'm doing, right? I'm throwing away that number that comes back, y plus 10. Or I could assign it to something. And I could print it. If I look at print line, Spaces are always added between operands. This is an operand. 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 This is an operator operating on the operands. I don't know if this is an operator. I guess it is if these are operands. Print line formats using default formats for its operands and writes to standard out. I'm just looking to see if operator was included, but it's not. This is an expression. It evaluates to some value. Expressions evaluate 
to some value. E.g. y plus 10 is going to evaluate some value. It's an expression. A statement is a line of code to be executed. In computer programming, a statement is a syntactic unit of imperative programming language that expresses some action to be carried out. A program written in such a language is formed by a sequence of one or more statements. Uh, a statement may have internal components, e.g. expressions, which evaluate values. I'm sharing with you what all this means because when I learned about programming, it confused me. You know, sometimes they talk about statements and expression. I'm like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. All right, parameters and argument. What are you talking about? All these different words. So I'm teaching you the language with which, the language which we use to talk about the language, or the language we use to talk about programming. How many people that's helpful for you? Right. So you could point to something when you get into a code shop and start working. And you can say, what's going on with that expression right there? Or look at the statement on line 25 or line 26. Look at the statement on line 26. And you know, you're not going to say, you'll sound like you know what you're talking about, which you will <laughs> know what you're talking about. You'll know the difference between statement and expression. Between, ver between parameter and argument. You define a function with a parameter. You call a function and pass in arguments. Beautiful. So we've got multiple parameters. We have multiple returns. That's kind of cool. And I think that's a good place to end on this video. We've kind of got some functions here going. I think I'll give you a hands-on exercise in the next video so you could code.